So today we're speedrunning through Marvel's Spider-Man. Now right at the beginning of the speedrun, we get two minutes of unskippable cutscenes. But right after that, we get to play. Today is the day that the police might finally get the chance to take down Kingpin, or as he's more commonly called in this game, Fisk. So we start swinging to his tower. Once we make it to our objective, we need to fight some goons. The objective during pretty much every fighting sequence is just defeat the enemies as fast as possible, which only takes a few hits per person. Right now, the fighting is pretty simple, but we'll get more advanced as we go through the game. After that, we can swing over to Fist's building, talk to our police friend Yuri, go into the building, and do the first major glitch in the game. For this glitch, first I want to reset from the last checkpoint, and then swing over to this door. After this, we can climb on the wall, move down a bit, do this aiming animation to make ourselves face up, move to this location on the door, and do the aiming animation again on this area of the door. After this, if we tap down and wait a few seconds, we're set to jump off and glitch through the wall. Now we're outside the map. Then all that's left is going up a couple buildings, and jumping all the way from here to a vent that appears even though the building isn't there. If we can get onto this vent, we can go through it and effectively skip 5 minutes of the game. Now all that's left is beating up some more bad guys until we finally make it to Fisk. With Fisk's fight, first we need to web his machine guns and throw them at him. This will make him mad and start throwing a table at us, so we can throw it back, hit him a few times, grab something else to throw at him, and attack Fisk until we get into a cutscene where he beats us up a bit until we can start playing again. Next we get to the point where Fisk gets a bunch of guys to attack us, but we try our best to focus only on him. We can either web him in that attack or throw something at him to attack. His goons get in the way a lot, so we stay away from them as much as possible because locking onto the right enemy is sometimes really hard for this game. Finally, we get a quick time event sequence where we fight Fisk in the air. But the thing is, you can actually turn off quick time events in the setting, so it just turns into an unskippable cutscene. But hey, we beat him and get to be a little romantic. But now it's time to go to our normal job, working for Dr. Octavius. Octavius and I are working on a prosthetic limb that we're response to mental commands. We arrive late to a really important meeting to keep our grant though, and the benefactors are angry. So after they leave and Dr. Octavius goes to fix the mess, we help fix up some issues with the prototype, which is a puzzle sequence that we can also skip completely because there's another setting to turn that off too. Anyways, we leave after that. Now our police friend, Yuri, asks us for some help with getting some of her police towers back online. These have another puzzle that we can skip, but once that's done, that part of the map is revealed and we get to see all the crimes along with other objectives that are there. One of these includes a backpack and some more things that we'll learn about as we continue through the game. Also, for any map objective that we do, we get a specific token that can be used for upgrading our gear. So we'll be doing a lot more of this stuff later. Now after we put three police towers back online and take care of a few crimes, it's time to go back to Dr. Octavius's lab. Now we skip all the cutscenes, but basically Dr. Octavius sees us working on the Spider-Man suit and thinks that we're the person that designs the suits for Spider-Man instead of just being him. He also gives us an idea to upgrade the suit so we don't have to use the tattered one anymore. Anyways, after getting our new suit, Yuri now asks us to go over to one of his hideout where some of his guys are still doing some illegal things. Here we get the chance to try out our new suit and a gadget that Dr. Octavius made for us, the impact web, which only takes one shot to put an enemy on the wall and immobilize them. Then it's time for some more fighting where we need to beat six waves of goons. For this, we can also use our new suit's power, battle focus. This makes us quickly gain focus for a short amount of time. With that focus, we can either heal ourselves or use a finishing move that one shots enemies. When doing the finishing move though, we want to be in the air so it's a much quicker animation. After the battle, we get a couple of base tokens and Yuri tells us to be on the lookout for more of Fist's hideout, so we swing over to a vantage point. Here we take a picture of the Empire State Building which unlocks landmark tokens and now we get some free time. There are several times during the game where it stops you from making progress for a few minutes so you can go on patrol and do side missions. We use this first free time to get a couple of police towers since some of them can be used for fast travel later and defeat some random criminals to get crime tokens. We can also get another backpack token, which will be important for the next main mission. Then Martin Lee, our Aunt May's boss, calls us over for a celebration for our aunt at the Feast Homeless Shelter. So we come to the party for about 10 seconds and leave immediately so we can go do some superhero work. On the way, we also want to unlock the OG Spider-Man suit, which gives Web Blossom the power we'll use for most of the game. I did also switch back to the new suit though, since my Twitch chat voted for it, so rip like two seconds. Now Yuri gives us another another call and tells us to go to Fist's estate sale as there was a break in by some people wearing demon masks and using strange powers. We get through the building undetected using vents and take out a few enemies on the way, including this guy who I kinda feel bad for. We also get this funny scene where I ignore this guy and go straight to the vent without taking him out. For some reason this doesn't end the mission even though he clearly noticed me. We then take out two more goons and notice a camera that looks like it belongs to our ex-girlfriend MJ, which obviously it does. Now we get onto the first part 
part of the game where we get to control MJ as she tells Peter what happened. MJ bluffed her way into the auction house, saying she was there to take photos for a paper, when in reality, she wanted to find some dirt on Fisk as she's a reporter. Then we take a few pictures of some art pieces while talking to the auction house manager. We can't speed this part up though, so I like to make the manager really uncomfortable by getting way too close to her and taking pictures which make her eyes look really ominous. We also ask a bunch of questions and the manager feels the interaction is weird, so we ask her to use the bathroom before we leave. But instead of actually using the bathroom, we get the first MJ stealth section, where we aren't stealthy at all since most enemies in this game are completely blind. Like seriously, I'm walking right in front of the manager, but she just ignores me. Once we make it into the room, we'll reset from the last checkpoint again to save some time and then rearrange the statue so it's in the correct order, which opens up a door with a secret file. But before we can leave, the demons come in and demand that file from the manager. We give put back to being Spider-Man now and agree to help MJ get out. So we'll go through this vent, reset to the last checkpoint to put enemies in the ideal places and take out a couple of guys. If any gunshots go off, the mission fails so I have to kill them quickly. Then MJ starts screaming so we rush to go fight and use the web blossom which almost one shots every demon in the room. After that it's just a bit more fighting so in general we web people to walls and take them out fast. Once we beat all the enemies, we skip a cutscene that basically just shows us grabbing a demon's mask to ask Martin Lee about it later. We also get a cutscene where we take MJ on a friend date, but of course that gets skipped. You'll see why I mentioned it in a little bit though. Now after we leave the date, Yuri asks us to deal with the villain Shocker, who pretty obviously has electricity powers. So we get a chase sequence, but we can finish it really quickly by taking this path so we can intercept him on the road a little later. Then he pushes us off of him and we need to do one more chase sequence, but again we take a path that lets us intercept him and we we easily win. So now we get some more free time and decide to ask Martin Lee about the mask the demons were wearing. Obviously we skip this cutscene, but he seems freaked out about it and tells us that MJ shouldn't go after them. Definitely nothing fishy going on here. But it's time for another free roam section, so we get a police tower, two landmark tokens, and a backpack token, before getting another police tower right by Dr. Octavius's lab as it's necessary for fast travel. Then we show up to work only to get fired because the mayor, Norman Osborne, tells us that the work is too dangerous in a cutscene that, of course, we don't watch. So everything is shut down, and there goes Dr. Octavius's life's work. Since we no longer have a job, we take the time to visit one of the research stations that Harry, our friend who is abroad right now, asks us to look after. These each give us a research token, and will also act as a fast travel point once that's unlocked. And then it's time to fight Shocker again, because somehow he already escaped. In this fight, the fastest way to complete it is to throw something at him, do a combo, and immediately repeat. This works for his first two phases, because he will be stuck in hit stun for the perfect amount of time so he can't attack back. Then on his final phase, we can beat him by pulling down a couple of pillars in between attacks and trapping Shocker under the ceiling. After this, we get another free time, so we go straight to this research station. Then, while we're unlocking it, we do the first backpack skip of the run. Basically, there are multiple times in the game where we decide that looking at a pizza menu from our date with MJ is more important than finishing a conversation. If we look at it four times, they finally get the message and stop talking to us. This is an easy time save multiple times in the run, and it's also really funny that Spider-Man hangs up and immediately calls back over and over again. Now we start heading over to the site of our next mission while picking up some police towers and tokens on the way. In this one, we find out that some demons are attacking some of Fist's buildings, and we want to know why. But first, we need to take care of Fist's men. So we use stealth at first to one-shot a bunch of the snipers, and then get my favorite gadget in the game, the spider drone. This gadget pops out and shoots enemies automatically. It's pretty much the only gadget I'll use from now on so it replenishes faster. Now after taking care of Fist's men, we meet Officer Davis, a cop who's helping us investigate the place. So we find a way into the building through the ceiling, let him in, and find some secret doors that are disguised as regular containers. After finding two of those, we also uncover a secret underground entrance and go in there to finally find a vault that the demons have stolen from. We can use the backpack skip again right here to save a bit of time by going through this door immediately, and see the demons taking the goods. So we get into another fighting sequence which I I really don't think I need to explain anymore, and then a chase with this truck. The sad thing about this chase sequence is all we can do is follow it for a while until the game finally gives us the option to attack the people. There's no real way to speed it up. And then after finally actually stopping the demons, the truck gets into a car crash and goes out of control, so we need to save it from getting hit by a train. And while we're doing this, a demon tries to ram into us, but luckily Officer Davis wrecks the dude and saves the day. He's now officially a hero of the people. Now after all these events, we unlock fast travel 
traveling, get evicted from our apartment, and our landlord throws away all of our things. Unfortunately, this includes a USB stick with a bunch of Spidey stuff, so we go on a mission to track it down, which leads us to three different areas before finally finding it here with some goons. Once we beat them up and retrieve it, we get another gadget, the web bomb. It's a really cool gadget when playing casually, but we never use it again after the next fight. So we solve that crisis, but we still need to find a place to stay. We try MJ's place only to wimp out at the last second because, you know, it's kind of weird. But after doing some small missions, Aunt May finally gives us the option to stay at her place, even though we never actually hear that option since we hang up before she can even offer it. We just really don't like listening to people in this run. But we wake up the next morning and get some money from Aunt May since we're a bum before getting a call from MJ saying that there's going to be an award ceremony for Officer Davis during Mayor Osborne's re-election rally. And we tell her we'll go with her once it starts. Before that though, it's time for another free time. Pretty much the usual stuff for this one, collect some items that we'll need for upgrades later, and show up to our next mission at another one of Fisk's towers as fast as possible. Here the demons are attacking a bunch of Fisk's men, so Fisk makes a deal with us that if we protect his men, he'll tell us who the leader of the demons is. So yeah, pretty much some more regular fighting. Once we save all of Fisk's men though, we go up to the top of the building and catch some of the demons in a helicopter flying away. We try to stop them, but end up making a helicopter with a wrecking ball and almost killing a lot of people with this falling tower. This is really gonna suck to clean up, but that's someone else's problem. After that, we chase after the helicopter for a while until the game finally lets us launch onto it. Once we get onto the helicopter, we can take out its engines and take it down. We finish the sequence off with style by saving the helicopter before it plummets to the ground. And again, I seriously don't envy the people that need to clean this up. But anyways, after barely saving a bunch of people, it's time to go to Osborne's campaign rally. Now we skip the four cutscenes that play here, but all you have to know is that the demons wanted to send a message and killed a lot of people to do so using explosives. Also, in all the explosions during the rally, Peter got knocked out, so we start controlling Officer Davis's son, Miles Morales. In this sequence, we first find our mom, who is almost crushed, but end up saving her. Then she literally begs us to stay so we don't die, but we ignore her because ignoring people is pretty much the entire point of this speedrun and go looking for our dad. As we go through, we see some very gruesome scenes and again, see how oblivious the enemies are during the stealth sections. I even walk on a bar just slightly above them, but they have no idea. Finally, we make it to the spot where our dad was and skip the next cutscene, which pretty much just shows the demon sparing Miles for some reason, but Officer Davis is dead and it's pretty sad. So yeah, after all those events, Spider-Man realizes that Martin Lee is the one in charge, but before the police can make a move on him, they need some more proof. So we go to the recycling center owned by Martin Lee, and after taking out some bad guys and short-circuiting some stuff, we find a room with some targets and a bunch of explosives. It looks like they're going after Osborne's campaign offices. We also find the staging area for these attacks though, so we head over there and beat up some more bad guys to clear it out. Once that's done, we open a door which contains a strange clipboard, which we'll backpack skip some dialogue on, and a list of all the demons' hideouts. Then we leave the building and need to beat up a few more demons, only to get stopped by the forces of Silver Sable, a mercenary group hired by Osborne to keep the peace. Of course, we don't see any of that since, you know, trying to go fast, but they're going to set up a bunch of bases around the city and be really annoying in the future. Now we'll finally head over to Feast and check out Martin Lee's office. It's locked, but we web sling over to a vent, which somehow nobody notices, and find a bunch of evidence which will finally lead to the mandate for arrest, even though that won't do too much right now. Following that, it's time to head back to Dr. Octavius's lab, where, after ignoring Yuri four times the skipper dialogue, we actually arrive on time for once. I mean, I guess we're not technically employed there currently, but hey, I'm still proud of it. Now, Dr. Octavius found some new investors, and we might be able to get the project back on track. So we do a few puzzles, hear about how Osborne and Octavius were the co-founders of Oscorp in a cutscene we skip, and leave after only being there for about five minutes. I'm a really good worker. We also get some more free time after ignoring MJ with the backpack skip a few times while she tries to invite us for dinner. So we get a couple more tokens just like usual, and then awkwardly wait outside her door until she calls us because we definitely aren't creepy at all. But it's now time for a dinner date. And during the date, she tells Peter the story about how she snuck into a chop shop owned by Tombstone, and we gain control of her. In this mission, we get to see some more lovely examples of how good the NPCs are at spotting MJ. You can pretty much almost touch them, but they repeatedly don't worry about you if you go fast enough. This eventually leads us to Tombstone's office, where we find information about him building a vehicle for Martin Lee and transporting something called Devil's Breath with it. But MJ makes it out safely and gets to enjoy some nice dinner now. Except, like usual, Peter needs to leave halfway through the date to 
to go rescue Charles Standish, Osborne's CFO. His place is being invaded by demons, so we swing over there and beat up some villains for a while. One interesting part about this mission is how we need to climb up the elevator shafts while demons peek their heads out to shoot us. This is just a really goofy section. But we make it to the home of Standish, beat up some more demons, and finally rescue him. However, in a cutscene we skip, he lets us know that he doesn't know what Devil's Breath is, but a scientist named Isaac Delaney would. Now MJ calls and asks if we learned anything, to which we respond by looking at a pizza menu four times to ignore her, just like usual. She still somehow knows to look for Isaac Delaney though, so it doesn't matter anyway. Then we get a bit more free time before Yuri asks us to go check out a weird contraption on a roof. Once we make it there, we see a guy who asks if we can stop the bombs he planted. Seems like a lot of work though, so we kinda just leave it there. I mean, I'm pretty sure it won't kill anyone. Now once MJ finally calls back with the location of Isaac Delaney, we learn that he's at a costume party, but don't know which person in this picture he is. So we run around the party talking to the other two in the picture until we finally get told he's on the dance floor. And we are so close to getting him to safety so the demons can't get to him, but some random guy dressed up as Rhino stops us to fight and he gets taken away. Great. Now we need to go all throughout the building, beating up different goons before we finally find Delaney, but he gets killed in a cutscene that we skip. Yep, being late to important events is kind of on brand for me at this point. Then Martin Lee goes and infects a bunch of people with his darkness power, so we have to fight the fake Rhino guy to move on. Kinda feels good given that if this guy didn't stop us earlier, we might have saved Delaney's life. But we tell Yuri about everything that happened, before ignoring her because she talks for way too long, and head over to Osborne's office. This place is heavily protected by the security system and Sable. But I've done enough stealth missions to know how bad these people are at their job, so it's not a problem at all. All we need to do is swing over and hack four different boxes on the side of this building. Each time we hack one, there's more security added. But like I said, the security kinda sucks. Once these are taken care of, we can finally get into Osborne's office and learn all about Devil's Breath with the PowerPoint that looks like a third grader made it. It shows us important information though, like how Devil's Breath was originally supposed to be a miracle drug to cure diseases, but is now more likely to cause a global epidemic. And because it's so dangerous, another scientist named Dr. Michaels carries it at all times. So Martin Lee wants to unleash this drug onto the world, so people will hate Osborne for making it. Yeah, he might just be a little petty. After we head out, we call MJ who says she's trying to get to Standish and infiltrating one of Sable's bases. Now while we're having this conversation, I'm also swinging over to where she is, and before we even end the phone call, I'm there. But somehow, MJ still had enough time to get through the entire base and is being held at gunpoint, so we jump in to save her. Now we go back in time and get to do a really fun stealth mission. At the dinner date, Peter gave MJ some distraction devices for if she was ever trying to sneak somewhere again. He knows her so well. So we can use those to move the guards somewhere else and sneak past. To be honest, this is a pretty standard stealth mission at first. It's pretty much just go past the oblivious guards and take a couple pictures of things. But the real cool part comes here. There's a moving car that you're normally supposed to use for cover, which we do, but if you get just ahead of the car at the last second and go behind this guard, no one sees us at all. So we can just continue walking all the way over to where Standish currently is while everyone is too dumb to see us. And it saves like a minute. But as MJ tries to talk to Standish, Spider-Man jumps in because he saw Standish had a gun. This makes MJ mad though because she was just about to get information from him and they get to have a really awkward swing back. After this, MJ tries to complain to us on the phone and says that this is the reason we broke up, but we ignore her like usual. Instead, we focus on trying to be productive during one of the longest free times in the game. Since it's so long, this is the perfect time to go all the way to the top of the map and unlock some fast travel locations. First, I unlock one in the Upper East Side Police Department and then also one in Harlem at the top left of the map. And then after this, we waited Dr. Octavius's lab for a while until we can go in and do some more puzzles. Octavius also asks us to check out a new material he wants to use, but we warn him that it would be really risky. Then we look at some of his brain scans, which aren't looking too good. Oh yeah, by the way, Dr. Octavius is slowly losing the ability to use his arms, and that's why he wants to complete the project so much, but it's kind of driving him mad. Well, I'm sure there's no foreshadowing in this. But like usual, we'll leave the lab five minutes after coming in, since we're such a hard worker, and get ready to go over to Feast. Today is Miles' first day, as his mom thinks that working there will help him cope. But instead of just going directly to Feast, we need to save Miles from some thugs first. It's pretty easy to be honest, but it leads us into our next Miles mission. In this section, Miles decides that instead of going through the security checks that Sable has put up, he'd rather risk his life by sneaking through the area. Now we get access to a hacking app that Miles made, which can stop drones from working, and turn on electric objects. It's pretty fun because we get to mess with the incompetent 
and guards, and finally make it to Feast, where Miles can start working. At this point, we turn back into Peter and learn that Sable's men are trying to move Dr. Michaels to a safe house. We know how dumb these guys are though, so we come to watch as well, and of course, the demons take Michaels. This leads us into another chase scene, but this time we can jump onto the van and fight an endless supply of enemies. Legitimately, no matter how many we defeat, more keep coming because apparently they were stacked on top of each other in the truck. Eventually, some more cars come chasing after us, so we have to take care of those before getting whipped up by this dude's wacky inflatable arms. Now, after all of this, we finally try to take the devil's breath from Martin Lee, but the problem is he catches us in his weird dark world thing. In this, he goes on a whole spiel about how bad a person Osborne is, but I care so little that I skip some of his dialogue with some pizza menus. Then he tries to show us what the point of the mask is, but we refuse and he gets angry. Then all we can do is wait for his dialogue to run its course while sending out a bunch of spider drones to deal with the spirits he creates. It's kind of hilarious because they all get one shot. And finally, after he stops complaining, he creates a gigantic mask, but we can throw a few of its own attacks back at it and win the fight. So we go back into the real world and get in a car crash, losing Martin Lee. The good thing is, right after this, Yuri tells us that people saw him in a black sedan. So we go over there, notice he's gone, and try to tell MJ, but she doesn't pick up. See, she's still kind of upset that Peter doesn't trust her enough to do stealth missions, so she went to the Grand Central Station without telling him. Once we look at one of the exhibits there, we get a cutscene, and Martin Lee traps a bunch of hostages while preparing to release Devil's Breath, but he wants to wait until Osborne gets there. MJ then calls Peter, lets him know what the situation is, and we get this cool scenario where we get to watch Peter move around as someone else. We signal Peter to distract everyone so we can get control of the drones in the station, but we get caught and told to move over. Thankfully, Peter rescues us and we get to do some more stealth. This part of the game is really cool because we combine stealth with the ability to use Peter to take down enemies. They're also still really dumb, so we can quickly make it to our objective, cause some mayhem, and get Martin Lee to start the Devil's Breath countdown. But of course, we can very easily disarm it before getting to play as Spider-Man again. MJ wants us to clear a path so all the hostages can leave. Now, it would be smart to do this quietly, but that takes too long. So instead, we go up to a guy with a gun so he'll shoot us and let us move on faster. Unfortunately, this guy forgot which button the trigger was and wastes like 15 seconds for no reason. But eventually, the hostages leave and we get to beat up some more goons before boarding the train that Martin Lee is escaping on. In this section, all we can do is dodge a few attacks and hit him a few times. Not too much else we can do to speed it up. Once we defeat Martin Lee though, we also have to make sure the train doesn't kill a bunch of people, so we use our webs to make the train tracks go up through the sidewalk where they're thankfully doing construction. And looks like they'll need to do even more now. So Martin Lee is caught and the game should be over, right? Well, we still got a bit more to do. First, we finally do one of Taskmaster's challenges where we go around the city destroying a few bombs he planted. If we do this fast enough, we can get six challenge tokens, which will be very important in a little bit. Then we visit Dr. Octavius and see that his neurotechnology might be driving him insane, but I don't have any time to worry about him since I'd rather go check in on Miles. But after visiting Feast for a few minutes, we noticed that the truck that was carrying Devil's Breath got attacked. Now we head over there and of course it's gone. And to make matters worse, a bunch of criminals from Rikers Island prison complex also escaped at the same time. That's fun. So we go through and beat up some more bad guys for a while. Pretty normal stuff. Eventually though, we learned that a bunch of our worst enemies have escaped from prison as well. This leads us into a game of tag with Electro, which includes this part where we climb up this building, but simply take all of Electro's attacks head on because dodging doesn't save time. Pretty funny to look at though. Once we make it to the top, we get ambushed by Electro, the Vulture, Rhino, Scorpion, and Martin Lee. This is an unskippable cutscene, but to be fair, it's kind of nice since it's the perfect time to have a bathroom break. Now Peter tries his best to fight all the villains, but he gets destroyed pretty quickly. And then Dr. Octavius comes out and shows us that he is now a super villain too. Who would have ever guessed? Now after getting tossed into the ocean and rescued by Yuri, we get four cutscenes that we skip, but to quickly explain them, the city gets really messed up, Sable's men start stealing, escape convicts set up bases, and Octavius release Devil's Breath so a bunch of people are dying. This means we now need to stop every single villain and find an anti-serum for Devil's Breath. Oh, and Aunt May might also be sick, but there's no time for sadness, we need to go fast. When we can finally start playing again, we want to reload from the previous checkpoint, which causes Yuri to call us sooner and tell us about the new Sable and prisoner bases around the city. But I don't have time for explanations or what she wants me to do since I'd rather fight a demon's base right now. We do this mission since we have some free time and we want to get some base tokens for an upgrade we'll be getting really soon. This is just a wave battle where more demons keep coming in. Pretty 
pretty simple stuff. Then Yuri gives us a call and tells us that her men need help because both Electro and Rhino are causing mayhem at different areas of the city. We go to Electro first where he set up a bunch of transformers to keep the police trapped in a building. We take out all five of those by shooting webs at them and help the police beat up some goons before going to Rhino. In this area, Rhino is running through the streets while a bunch of prisoners are attacking the police. We need to go one by one defeating each group of prisoners. Also, for some reason, Sable's men come and attack me while I'm beating up the prisoners. They feel like they need to stop me even though I'm helping them, so we have to beat them up too. Finally, the feast in Harlem is on fire, so we need to rush over there to save MJ, Miles, and Aunt May. But after all that's done, it's finally time to start beating some bosses. And this is where a bunch of the tokens that we got earlier come in, so we can buy the Fear Itself suit. This unlocks the quad damage suit power, which, as you can probably guess, is very broken. But before we can use it, we need to check out Times Square for some more evidence. We get there and start talking to a police officer who we ignore, Classic Peter, and find a sign that has residue of devil's breath on it. And after isolating the residue, we follow the trail to its source of this building. The building houses all of Octavius's plans and missions for each villain. All we care about though is the map at the end of it, where after turning on a light, we can see that Lee is going after an anti-serum for devil's breath. Now we can start to leave, but before that, we open a computer and Octavius starts talking, and then proceeds to blow up the building. Thankfully though, our spidey senses keep us safe until we get captured by the vulture. This leads us to our fight with the Vulture and Electro. Now in this fight, we start by using webs on Electro and then attacking him before destroying one of his Transformers. This gets the Vulture to attack us, but we can do our quad damage power up and finish him off in only one cycle. This prompts them to start attacking us together, but we solely focus on Electro for now. All that he takes is attacking him, taking down a Transformer, and repeating that sequence one more time before he's immobilized. This gives our quad damage power enough time to recharge, so we can dodge one more of the Vulture's attack use the power, and finish him quickly. That's two down, four to go. So Spider-Man decides to take a bit of a sleep break before waking up and immediately going after Scorpion. Unfortunately, once we make it to our destination, Scorpion injects us with poison in a cutscene that I skip. Now we get this very strange part of the game where we need to swing around the city and avoid the poison on the ground. We quickly figure out what the poison is and learn that it causes our brain to have illusions that the body thinks are real. So we go to three different places to make the antidote. Each time we make it to a place though, we get an extreme hallucination where Dr. Octavius mocks us for not being able to save him. We ignore him like everyone else in our life though. Then we get a little better with one of the ingredients before going to the next. Also, these weird scorpion tail things start attacking us, which are really annoying to dodge, but it's a pretty straightforward area. Once we make it to Dr. Octavius's lab, the place where the last ingredient is, we get in a hallucination where we need to beat up multiple scorpions. I use the quad damage power for this to speed it up a bit, but it's a pretty simple fight and we finally get cured. Oh, and also, after we get cured, Spider-Man is kinda just in his underwear. You know, it happens. Now our next objective is to go back to Feast and wait for a full 3 minutes during another free time. At this point, we don't really need any more tokens, so we kinda just wait and maybe do a little bit of hopping around. Finally though, the next mission appears and we learn that Miles went off to get some stuff for the center. While Miles was looking for stuff though, he found a prisoner camp that might have the medicine they need. This is another stealth section, so you already know it's pretty funny how bad these guys are, and we pretty easily get to the medicine. But in a cutscene we skip, Miles sees that Scorpion and Rhino are here. Rhino then notices Miles, and we have to do another stealth section while hiding from him. He's not too much smarter than everyone else in the world though, so it's pretty straightforward. Now Miles tells Spider-Man that Rhino and Scorpion are attacking Oscorp relief centers, so we head over to the next one and finally get to take them down. In this boss fight, it starts with only fighting Rhino, so we collapse a concrete tube on him, use our quad damage, and finish this part right away. After that, Scorpion decides to join in on the fun. We can recharge our quad damage right away though by restarting from the last checkpoint. Then we want to run over, web Scorpion a few times, and hit Rhino with another large item. This unfortunately didn't work for me at first, so I just decided to restart from the last checkpoint again. After doing it correctly, we can first attack Rhino with quad damage before moving on to Scorpion, who stays webbed up for a while. I did actually mess up the fight though and not completely defeat Rhino, so it still had to go on a little 
longer. We can one cycle this, but it's kind of hard. So I just did a few more attacks afterwards and finished them off. Then it's time to do the last MJ stealth mission where she sneaks into Osborne's penthouse. The entire building is on lockdown. And while most residents are downstairs, Osborne is still in his penthouse. We can use this information to cause a commotion and sneak into the security area where we find a taser. The taser is really nice because MJ finally has the ability to fight back and can one shot enemies. So we go through a couple mercenaries until we can finally turn on a security alarm and get Osborne to come down from his penthouse. Once him and his guards come down, we can then sneak through the penthouse elevator and now have the apartment all to ourselves. After this, we find a secret door in his wall and need to get the passcode for it, which is the date that Harry, Osborne's son and our friend, left for Europe. So we search the apartment until we find the key to his room and see that he was a little sicker than we ever thought. Turns out Devil's Breath was originally created to save Osborne's wife, but she died and now it's meant to save his son. The guards also come back in the penthouse at this point, so it's time for another stealth mission. It's pretty easy with the taser, and the only thing to note is that we reset the game here so we can come back to the guards in good positions and sneak by really easily. Now we put in the code and see a very strange room. With this, we can find the location that Martin Lee is most likely at and get a cutscene that we skip where Sable almost finds us. Also in that cutscene, MJ gets a weird spider on her. Sure, that's not important at all. All that's left now is sneaking out of the penthouse, which we use the reset strategy again and have the easiest escape of my life before tasing this dude on the porch, jumping off, and getting Spider-Man to catch us. Finally, it's time to take down Lee. We head over to where Lee and Osborne are, but first need to take care of some demons and Sable soldiers who really love being a pain in the butt. We also get a cutscene that of course I skip, where Sable finally decides to work with me, but we don't have time to worry about that right now. So we head on down this totally normal building until we make it into another dimension and hear about Martin Lee's tragic backstory where Osborne's experiments caused his parents to die and him to get these weird powers. But we're like, maybe killing a bunch of people isn't the greatest way to get back at him. Anyways, let's finally fight. In this fight, we want to activate our quad damage and just keep hitting him. That's pretty much it. Every time he gets away, we throw something at him and continue. It's pretty simple. Then his next phase shows up where he summons a demon every once in a while. It's the same strategy though. Hit him as much as possible and eventually he goes down and gives up on his revenge. Now some more cutscene things happen like Spider-Man getting really injured and all that, but who cares about how he's doing? It's finally time to beat the game. So we head back to Octavius's lab for the last time and make a brand new suit to defeat him with. Now this suit gives us the resupply power, which makes our current gadget regenerate super quickly. Honestly, would have preferred the quad damage, but whatever. Now we can hurt Octavius by either webbing him enough times to attack or throwing two things at him and then attacking. Other than that, it's pretty much just going through the phases until we get a dramatic, unskippable cutscene. Here, Peter learns that Octavius knew he was Spider-Man the whole time, so that's pretty messed up considering how much Octavius tried to kill him. So Peter gets upset, starts destroying his stuff, and we get the last battle on the side of this building. In this, we're supposed to be dodging his attacks and countering, but instead, we can simply punch him two times, wait a bit so we don't do the last last hit in the combo and punch him twice again. This will get him in a stun lock. It's pretty tight timing though because punching too early or too late will result in him getting out. But overall, not too bad and we can end our time as soon as we land our last punch. And there we go. 3, 47, 34. Which is going to put us at second place on the Marvel Spider-Man PS5 leaderboards and it's a time I'm really happy with. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering what happened at the end of the story, Aunt May died so we could mass produce the anti-serum, Peter gets back to together with MJ and that spider that climbed on MJ earlier bit Miles and he's now the next Spider-Man. So yeah, subscribe if you enjoyed.